Welcome. In this session in Linear Data Analysis, we'll explore Principal Components Analysis, or PCA, as a spectral decomposition. Let's review our terms first. Our data are in a matrix A, and these are real numbers, and there are M observations, so there are M rows, and there are N variables, so there are N columns. From this, we form a covariance matrix. This is a square matrix, it has all real numbers, and its size is the number of variables, or columns, in our original data. We know that if the data were in A, and by the way that we've constructed it, that this matrix is symmetric and it's positive semi-definite. Now, for empirical data, we often find it's positive definite, but we won't really be using these properties. If the, a matrix is symmetric and has all real numbers, then it has a spectral decomposition. And we can write that spectral decomposition as the matrix is the product of its eigenvector matrix, its eigenvalue matrix, which is a diagonal matrix, and then if it was generally diagonalizable, we would write E inverse. Because it's symmetric, we write E transpose. So let's explore uh, an example of this uh, eigen decomposition or spectral decomposition for some data that we previously looked at and in a, an earlier session, and they were fictitious quiz answers. So for those data, when we perform, when we form the uh, covariance matrix and we find the uh, spectral decomposition, these are the eigenvalues, roughly 76, 5, and 0 0.2. Now, if I was to do a scree plot of those, I would add them up, and that would be something like 76 plus 5, so it's going to be something like 81, and 75, 76 over 81, it's going to be a very large number. So we would have a large value here, and then the next one would be very small, and then very small. And our scree plot would look something like that. That scree plot would tell me that probably we only need to use one principal component in representing this matrix and representing this data and we might need to go possibly to two but I would I would think that immediately all we need is one so that's what we get out of the eigenvalue matrix what about the eigenvector matrix well let's make note of this first eigenvector and I'll just write that as V for now and V is I'll say that's approximately and then, just to keep, thing, keep track of things, I'll call that 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.7. So I'll just make that note. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.7 is our eigenvalues. So from that, what can we do? Well, the next thing that we can do is we can say this matrix how could we represent it using the singular value decomposition, or the SVD? So let's recall that what we had was we said that the covariance matrix was the zero mean data matrix transpose times the zero mean data matrix divided by one less than the number of observations that we have. And I can write M using the singular value decomposition. So I could say that that equals, so if I take this transpose, that would be um, U sigma B transpose transpose times U sigma B transpose divided by M minus 1. And that would equal, so when I do this in reverse, what I see is that is going to be V times sigma transpose times U transpose times U times sigma times V transpose all divided by one less than the number of observations that we have. And U is an orthogonal matrix, size M by M. And U transpose U will therefore equal the identity, and sigma transpose times the identity is sigma transpose. So I can represent that entire thing as 
let me take this, uh, so I could put the, uh, this 1 over m minus 1 on the outside. Instead, I'll keep it on the inside. And I could say that that equals v times sigma transpose sigma over m minus 1 times v transpose. And now I can do some matching. I can say, well, if that if we use the singular value to composition of, of the zero mean matrix to get the covariance matrix, I get this expression. And then over here, I have this expression. And so the, these matrices have to match up, is that this was an eigenvector matrix, and it was, uh, it, these uh, have to form an orthonormal basis. These are an orthogonal matrix that form an orthonormal basis. This has to be a diagonal matrix. Sigma transpose sigma will be a diagonal matrix. And then we have copied over. So what we can conclude is that means that the, the loading vectors, the loading vectors of B are, let's underscore that because that's an important observation. These are the right singular vectors of our zero mean data. And we, in, to compute the SVD, we could, sorry, to compute the um, PCA of data, we could just compute the SVD. Because if I compute the SVD of M, I don't have to go through this MM transpose on an eigenvalue problem. Now, there may be reasons why we want to, but I will observe that we could simply take the SVD. So let's see how what that computation would look like. So that computation would be, um, so I'll call this naive. Naive, what we would get is we would get the U matrix, and how big would that U matrix be? Well, it's all real numbers, of course, and it would have the number of observations. And it's not uncommon in data analytics to have millions of observations. And if we then have a matrix U that's millions times millions, that may be more uh, computing uh, memory than we have in our computer, and it's also needless. We don't truly need that. So in MATLAB, in MATLAB, what we can do is this. We can say something like U, and MATLAB doesn't have sigma, so I'll use S, V equals, we would do the SVD of let's suppose that we have our zero mean data in the variable capital M. And then in MATLAB, what we do is put comma zero. And if you're interested in the uh, results of this, you would leave off the semicolon. I'll suppose that for large data, we don't really need these displayed on the console. And so we would put a semicolon on. And this is the, um, there are various names for this. This is sometimes called the economy let's put that in quotes, SVD. And here, that matrix now is all real numbers, and it has, sorry, it's all real numbers, and there are M rows to it, and it will reduce it down to just N columns. So that is how we would usually um, approach the uh, PCA is when I do a PCA, what I'll do is I'll find the zero mean data, and then I won't use the PCA function. I'll compute this SVD so that I can then do all of the work myself, and I have, uh, I have tighter numerical control over my uh, data analysis.